My name is Richard Mills and I'm uh, the Director of Sales for Marine Robotics at Kongsberg Maritime, based out of Norway, and we predominantly deal with uh, autonomous underwater vehicles, unmanned surface vehicles, and resident inspection and intervention vehicles. At this show, uh, Oceanology International Americas, we're actually here promoting a couple of relatively new products. The first one builds upon the long successful history of the Hugin AUV, that's the Hugin Superior, and the second one is a brand new capability, which is Eloom, a resident robot for inspection and intervention. AUV itself has been very successful over about 25 years in the commercial defense and academic marketplaces. But what we've done this particular time is concentrate on three very distinct areas. It's called Hugin Superior because we're looking at superior data, superior accuracy, and superior productivity. Superior data because we've put on some new sensors, predominantly the main one being something called HiSAS 1032 dual receiver. It's a bit of a mouthful, but what it is, is a synthetic aperture sonar, which has a pretty good resolution in the order of a couple of centimeters across and along track, out to very, very long range. Putting on a dual receiver makes the array much longer, which means we can either travel faster or see further. To give you an idea, a standard Hugin AUV equipped with the normal HiSAS 1032 with a single receiver covers approximately two and a half square kilometers an hour. And we've doubled that with the Hugin Superior. What does it mean in real terms? Well, if we look at some areas, say a football field, we can cover that in about 50 to 55 seconds. Um, an IKEA store, which uh, I can never get around in less than about an hour, takes about four minutes to cover with a Hugin Superior, right up to an island perhaps the size of Manhattan, which is 59 square kilometers. That takes us just 13 and a half hours to cover in very, very good resolution. So that's superior data. With superior accuracy, having the beautiful data, gorgeous resolution, is of little value if we don't know where it's positioned. Now, positioning of the data is incredibly important for both our defense and commercial customers. So what we've done is we've worked with our partners, FFI, the Defense Research Establishment in Norway, who've been involved in the Hugin program since day one, They've been involved in the SAS program since day one as well. And now they're involved in helping us develop um, micro navigation capability for the Hugin Superior. Now, when we look at the real world performance of a Hugin AUV, it's much the same as any other AUV manufacturer. Distance traveled in a straight line over a flat bottom is about 0.08% of how far you go. What we do with the Hugin Superior is we actually tie in the SAS returns and feed that into the navigation system to bound the IMU drift. The impact of that is we can halve that accuracy, or better. So our published specification is better than 0.04% of distance traveled in a straight line. As we continue the development, we actually hope that's going to get even better still. The final element, really, that we concentrate on Hugin Superior is superior productivity. So not only the area coverage of the HiSAS 1032 dual receiver, but we have a new EM2040, which has a slightly wider swath and a high frequency mode we have a new camera and laser on it, which has a higher frequency of uh, laser data, but also a wider swath. We're collecting more and more data in mission. On board the vehicle, not only do we have the traditional acoustic sensors, including a sub-bottom profiler, but we also put on pretty much everything else we've ever put onto an AUV. So there's methane, dissolved oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide, magnetometry, plus all of the other sensors that we can use on a single vehicle for the entire mission. Now, doing that actually has an impact on endurance. Every time we want to use more power, it means the vehicle can't go quite as far. So productivity is further enhanced by a new generation of Hugin batteries, which adds approximately 40% extra energy density. That means the missions can be that much longer. And on a, on a six battery standard Hugin, we're talking 48 hours. And with the Hugin Superior, we're now up to 72 to 80 hour endurances with those sensors running. The other product that we're really concentrating on at the moment as well and is very exciting is the Elum vehicle. So Kongsberg Maritime is partnered with a small organization based in Trondheim in Norway called Elum. There are about 12 people, predominantly roboticists out of uh, NTNU University. And we're commercializing a, a vehicle that they developed at the university for use in oil and gas. So Elum is a small robot, 20 centimeters diameter, three or four meters long, depending on the configuration, but with flexible joints. A traditional AUV is very much a rigid shape. 
And the e-loom is uh, quite different because it has joints at uh, various intervals so it can see around corners or get inside structures to inspect in between places that a work-class ROV or a cruising AUV can't. Now, as well as doing some inspection work, e-loom is configured to carry a multitude of tools. Now, being small and low, low uh, power and lightweight, we're not actually carrying huge amount or very, very large tools, but we're carrying things like an electric torque tool, class four for light intervention. The vehicle at the moment is tethered, and by the end of this year, it will be untethered uh, and capable of doing some tasks autonomously. However, when we talk about intervention, it's going to remain directly controlled through high bandwidth communication system so that when we actually touch a structure, it's operated safely by a human from shore. Now, at the moment, the Elum vehicles are currently undergoing a test in the Trondheim field, which is pre-qualification for an Equinor pilot program on the Osgard field. Equinor have uh, provided some development funding for the Elum project, and it's one of three technologies they're investigating for residency. Elum is the smallest and the most flexible of those technologies, and hopefully it offers something that the others necessarily can't do or, or, or are unable to do in the future. And that's by virtue of their size. A work-class ROV or a cruising AUV, pretty big machines these days, and this small 20 centimeter diameter of the Elum means it can get into very, very confined spaces. So watch this space for some more information on that as the year goes through. Uh, we hope to publish some results from the Osgard trial uh, later this summer. And by the end of the year, there'll be a tetherless version swimming around. And we'll be bringing it out to do some demonstrations in North America and in other places around the world.